ball in the corner. I'm going to play this in a way where I'm going to hopefully break this rack open and start to run balls. I, I will talk while I go, but I might not talk between every shot just because I might be really focusing on making a certain shot. John, play this eight ball. Stand, it's too early to tell about break balls this early on. We're just going to try to make two balls here first. I might use a little bit of this seven ball to give it another bump. But I'm going to try to make sure I hit the six ball on this one off of the seven, because if I do, that's going to clear the six and it's going to stop my cue ball there. And see where the 12 ball is right here? If I can hit this and make it stick there, the 12 ball will be what's called a backup ball or an outlet ball. See if I can make that happen. See, it's there just in case for me to shoot, just in case I, I don't get something else. Now, I'm going to take the three, and the reason I'm going to take the three instead is because I'm going to be able to bump this again. And even though I'm going to hit this ball and go this way, it's still going to leave this ball here as an outlet ball. See? So I know that ball's there to shoot no matter what anything else does, okay? So right now, I don't really have a great break ball. The, the, 15 is possible, but it's not really that good. So I'm going to probably try to create something here pretty soon. Actually, I might, I might even try to do it here in uh, this shot. I'm going to go ahead and play the 12 ball with a little bit of draw and pull that into this 9 ball, hoping to hit that into this and push this out into this area. Let's see how we do. <laughs> so there it is. So now I have a break ball, see? So I created a break ball there. From that. I did create a little bit of a cluster, which I was hoping not to do, but that's just part of the deal. You have to sometimes work your way through problems. So I'm going to go ahead and take this 1411, 14 ball and the 11 to clear out that side. And then I have to start thinking about this stuff here. So I'll probably go forward a little on this. Uh, let's see. That ball does go if I can get there. All right, yeah, I'm going to go forward for this. All right, I'm going to play this ball with a little bit of left hand spin, and the reason is I'm just going to hug this rail a bit. It's going to hopefully come in there and hit that 13 ball with the cue ball. Okay, and clear that out. I didn't clear it as far as I'd like to, unfortunately. And, but I actually can make the, the nine ball. That's the ball I was trying to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, play that nine ball now. Your fingers crossed for me. I don't want to draw it though. That's what I was worried about. <coughs> yeah. Little concern with that one. As well I should have been. Well, you're now going to see the cue ball travel an extremely long distance for no apparent reason. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. Oh. Come on back. That worked out. out there. <laughs> A little risky, but I got away with it there. Okay, well, I can make that two ball now, but that's not going to give me a shot. So I'm certainly in scramble mode right at this point. I can do this and get on the 10. Hopefully get an angle on that 10, which I did not. I got a shot to two. I'll play this two with a little right hand spin. Hopefully come around for this pin. That's one too far. Gosh. I'm not doing very good with my position right now. Well, you all want to see a bank shot anyway, right? Yeah, we are. Because I haven't seen one from you lately. There we go. I'm actually back in line right now. If I can oh. make this ball, we're good. They don't always turn out perfect, but sometimes they end up pretty. I tell you the truth. Hey, scramble mode. After watching you, I don't even want to play cool. <laughs> well, that's the whole idea. You know, this. I, I was very fortunate to have some very good pool players uh, in my area where I grew up. I grew up in Garden Grove, which is down Orange County. And, uh, uh, one 
one gentleman who came here one time with me, Wayne Norcross, was the person I started playing straight fool with the most. And uh, he was a world-class player in the 1960s. He was playing all the tournaments with Lassiter and uh, Lou Butera and uh, Balsas and all those great players from that period. Okay, I'm going to focus on my shot here. Just one second. Okay, so, uh, but anyway, uh, I was lucky to be able to learn how to play this particular game. But if you learn how to play a game properly and you learn the, the proper technique, uh, you're going to enjoy it a lot more. I mean, as seniors, the one thing you have to consider is the fact that this game is one of the few games you can play your whole life. There are very few games that a senior can play their whole life. I just turned 60 myself the other day. and. Uh, Knock on wood, I still play basketball two days a week, which is good. You know, that I, my muscles and my joints will let me do that. I've never broken a bone. But any of you that have ever had health issues, you know that it's really nice to have a game or a sport or some type of activity that you can do that keeps you moving, keeps you up, keeps you stretching, and all those things without pain. And this is one of those games that really can do that for you. So, I think it's a great thing. That was not a great roll. <laughs> I think I can make this ball. Yikes. I can make it, but then what? Hmm. Excuse me there. I may have to sit in your lap on this shot. I'm going to have to do that. I'm sorry. One thing, though, as you can see, that's, that's the first ball since I started here about three racks ago that I've shot in any pocket other than these four. You don't want to really shoot balls long distance or drive them down here because it makes it harder. You have to go and get them, and that means long shots. And long shots are harder than short shots. So in straight pool especially, but if you play eight ball, it's the same thing. You don't want to have long shots. The, the goal is to keep the balls close together where you can maneuver them. And the thing that's pretty, I think, about this game is the position part, right? I mean, right now you're watching me sometimes scramble for a few shots just because of a couple of rolls that I've gotten, but, but bottom line is most of the shots I've had have been fairly close and fairly yeah. short, and I'm not moving my ball more than I have to. And that's a big key to being successful. See, I just want to move that one just to clear it out of the way, but I didn't want to knock it away. A little bit out of line that time. Could shoot that ball. I feel like, oh, they want to. I'll shoot a heart. I'll shoot a long shot. Going against the rules of straight pool by doing that, but that's okay. Now, right now, I don't have a break ball. Can you see? I don't really have a particularly good break ball. Right now, I'm going to try to hit that four ball with a little draw. Come over and hit that ten, and see if I can make that into a break ball. I hit the 13 instead, but that's 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 actually still not too bad. It's still not a great break ball. I'm going to shoot the 11. Try to get straight in the side on the six. I think that should be pretty close. Yep. And uh, as it stands right now, 13 may be the best I get. Okay. So if that's the case, I'm going to leave that 14. I can. Hopefully that 10 ball goes by. Yep. I'm going to stun this over for the 7. Go ahead and use the 7 to get on the 10. And use the 10 to hopefully get back out here for the 14. A little far. It's okay. I'm just going to be a lot going to have to make a really pretty shot here. I don't, know. I don't think I can throw that that far. So it's going to be pretty. I'm going to go take it inside of this pocket. I see where the pocket is. I'm going to go just to the right of it. But I'm going to go to the right of it with a little left hand spin and try to bring it back out. A little tricky. Oh, oh perfect. Nice. I want to show you something right now. Who, who can catch? Who can catch? Okay, stand up a second there, sir. I'm not going to throw something hard at you. I want you to stand right there. 
Now, if I were going to take a softball, okay, or a bocce ball. horseshoe, bocce ball, right? I'm sorry, i got to remember where I'm at. Bocce ball. And I was going to throw that. I would have to turn my hips to make clearance for this throw, wouldn't I? Right? Now, I'm in a position right now. I'm going to throw really easy, but just be ready. That I can throw this ball at this angle. But what I have to do to do that is I have to basically put my back foot, which in this case is I'm right-handed, so my right foot, at this angle, my left toe, if you'll notice, is pointing directly at this gentleman, because that's where I wanted to throw that ball. All you'd have to do at this particular point is bend over, and you're in a perfect shooting position to play pool. Okay? So let me explain that to you one more time. So if you have a bocce ball, watch y'all stand up. Stand up. If you can't, if you can't, it's all right. <laughs> if you can't stand up, we got, we got here, didn't we? We got here somehow. <laughs> Some of you don't stand, you don't have to stand as fast as you as slow, it's okay. But, but bottom line is, if you get yourself in a position like you're going to throw, okay, you have to turn your hips to throw. You can't stand like this and throw. You can't play pool like this and shoot because the stick's going to be right through your hips. So you take your body, you turn it like you're going to throw a ball, right? Now, in that particular position here, you have to see you're trying to throw it sidearm. You wouldn't do that. If you're going to throw it straight, you're going to turn your hips more. Okay, there you go. So when you do that, you would probably put your, if, anybody here left-handed? Okay, all right, sorry. No, I'm just kidding, you just do it the opposite way. You just, <laughs> just do it the opposite way, right? So your back foot, and this, and for your right hand, it would be your right foot. Your front foot would be your left foot. So you would separate your feet because you need to get momentum, right? And you need to have balance. So if you put your feet in that position, they're gonna be a little more than shoulder length apart. They're not going to be too close together because you need to have leverage to follow through, right? But when you shoot a pool ball, you need to have leverage to follow through as well. And it puts you completely centered underneath your feet. See how that feels? Because most of you may stand a different way, okay? Now, if you have some physical things that keep you from standing that way, you might have to find an alternative way. And I would love to work with you. Maybe if you think that that's not possible for you to do physically, it might be worth 15 minutes of your time to let me find a way that you can do it more comfortably. I could, I could do that while I'm here. But uh, bottom line is, if you get yourself in that kind of a position, what this does, you go ahead and sit down. But what this does is this allows you, so I say I'm going to uh, hit that nine ball in the pocket, right? What I would do is get myself in a position where I could throw the cue ball, which is my ball, right at the spot I need to hit. So I'm basically dropping, my cue stick is basically my arm, my right arm. So if I drop my cue stick next to my side, like I would, and turn my hips like I'm gonna throw, this is the position I wanna be in to shoot. So I take that line here, this arm, line that up with that spot I wanna hit, walk directly towards it and keep my feet at that same line. It allows me to come into my target without having to adjust or aim at all with your back arm. Now, so many of us, we, we get ourselves too forward. We put our foot in front of it, our other foot, a lot like this. Well, what happens with that is for me to get this underneath my chin so I can see, I tuck my arm like this. But then I have to steer with this arm to make it go straighter to follow through. So the key to being able to shoot the ball comfortably with good balance, and as, as we get older, balance is more important. Number one, we don't want to fall, but basically what this does is this allows us to get more strength from our core. Because if we're standing balanced like this and we come into a shot and we're sitting in this shot, we can hit that ball hard and we're not really doing anything with our body to create leverage. We're creating the leverage and we're creating the inertia from the cue stick itself. Because all we're doing with this right arm is letting it swing and swing like this, okay? So let's, who does not stand that way now? and would like to, to volunteer to come down. And I'll try to make it comfortable for you. Anybody? Well, I can Okay. I'm sure I don't do it right. All right. Let's you don't that. use That's your fine. hip, is that what you're saying? Looks like it's all arm. Basically, the entire momentum of the cue is done from the arm down, from the, from the hinge of the shoulder down to the wrist. Everything works from below there. But really, there's hardly any movement other than from the elbow down. A little bit on the follow through, sometime on the backstroke, the arm might slightly come up. As you follow through, the arm will slightly come down because just that's the way our, our muscles are built. Okay, let's go ahead and line up on that one. Okay, 
All right, so she's doing exactly what I said a lot of folks do. See that foot is directly in front of that one? Okay. I always now, feel like I'm... Okay, and you always feel like you're falling, huh? Okay, now, now don't, don't move your feet. Stay right there like you're going to shoot. Now, what I want you to do is stand up straight. Go ahead and stand up straight. Okay. And remember how you're going to throw your softball? What would you have to do to throw a softball? You, no, you wouldn't throw it around your body, would you? <laughs> no. Okay, how would you throw it? Stand how you would throw it. So I would open this up. You'd open this up. What you do really is you turn your body. You turn your body like this. You take your, your butt and it comes out at about a 45 degree angle like this. And you would lean over it because you need clearance for your arm, right? Okay, now I'm going to put this cue back in your arm. Reach over that shot now. And now take a look at this. Don't shoot it, but take a look at this. See her elbow to her wrist is straight up and down now. Okay, so when you put your chin over your cue there, take a look. You're looking right down the barrel of your cue. You can shoot your ball. Look at that. Yay! I guarantee you she's not going to be able to do that comfortably unless she were to open up those hips and get that foot out of the way. So your left foot, or your right foot if you're left-handed, needs to be out of the line of the shot. So if this is the line of the shot. Let's, let's just put a cue ball over here and line this up. I'll make a straight shot because we all know that basically if you hit a straight shot straight, It'll go in, right? I'll try to get it straight where my stick will lay there. Okay? So there's an angle you can see. So if this angle is here, that's where this arm has to be. But my body's got to be out of the way so I can swing this without bumping myself or steering with this hand. So that means this foot and this foot have to be to the side. If you can look at the line, my foot is about maybe two feet, two and a half feet, something like that, to the left of where the actual line of the shot is. But it has to be that way, so when I come forward, this can stay free and not bumping into anything. So that way it's just, you can you put your chin right over that, it allows you to see the shot perfectly. Isn't that cool? So it's, it's a natural motion that you can do from all the other things you do. And just remember, it comes to your pool game as well. All right, so if you're shooting a shot, let's say you're shooting an angle shot or something like this, okay? If you look at your target, and some of you as beginners, we, how many people do we have that are new members this, this year? Oh, quite a few, okay, great. The new members are just probably learning the game maybe. And if you're just learning the game and you'll look at a shot like that and say, I'd like to make that ball, but I'm not sure where to hit it, that's okay. You can always come around and look that ball straight in the pocket as if you were gonna shoot it in without your cue ball. And you would put your tip up against the ball and back it up to where the center of this cue ball as it comes in and hits this ball this direction, would make contact with it. So the center of it's going to be right there. It's about three quarters of an inch outside of the visual line. Okay? So if you're not sure of your shot, you go to the edge, you back up to where the middle is going to be, and just leave it there and rotate your stick around until you get to the center of the ball, which is where you're going to shoot from. And that tells me in that case I'm shooting at the edge of that ball. See what I just did? Now once you know that, then you go back to your softball stance. You get back here, I'm going to shoot this ball at that angle, put my cue on that line, and walk right towards where that target was. So as long as I stay on that target and don't change anything, that ball is going to go in. That won't even go in when it wants to go in, Charlie. <laughs> so there's a bottom line right there. If you do that on your shots, you're going to be balanced, and it also is going to make sure that the arm right here hangs straight up and down, and will swing in a straight line. Because if you stand like she was standing, and please, I don't take it wrong, because that's the way most people stand, it's one of the first things I will almost always fix on people. They want to get behind it. I want to see it, it's right there. But the problem is they're all scrunched up like this when that happens. You need to make sure you have clearance and get your body out of the way, so when you do lean over your shot, there's nothing in the way, and this arm can just hang from the shoulder. And if we could do this, and some of us can, it's just kind of an odd thing to try to do it. You might want to try this standing too if you want to see it. But if I stand like this, what I'm really doing is standing straight up and down with my arms to my side. And eventually what you want to do is, is leave this exactly where it is and move your body at a 45 degree angle. That looks really easy. Try to do that. Stand there. Don't move your shoulder. Don't go back or forth. Just move your hips. Nope. No. Take a look. See, I'm, I'm, there's two steps. Watch that. Step, step. And see, this arm stays isolated. It's not easy to do. Do it again. Okay. Stand like this. Here's the shoulder. This doesn't move. Step, step. Yeah. 
but most of us are gonna move our shoulders back because we're not used to isolating our muscles like that. So that's why it's much easier, instead of doing it that way, it's much easier to just get in a position like you're gonna throw, and hey, guess what, I'm already in that position. So it's a more natural way of getting that alignment, okay? Anybody have any questions on that? You will find that it really makes a big difference in your pocketing balls, okay? So that's the alignment. Now let's talk a little bit about making the shots themselves, okay? That come from that alignment. As I mentioned before, if you're not sure of your target, you can always come around and look at your ball straight in the pocket, back up to where the imaginary center of your cue ball is, and rotate that around to where the center of the cue ball actually is, and that gives you an aiming target. Now to be able to make that ball more consistently, it's better to stand back away from the ball a little bit more than it is to lean over the ball like this. Because when we lean over the ball like that, what we end up doing is we end up looking at the cue ball, then having to look up and find that object ball, then look back at the cue ball, and our eyes are going like this, right? You want to see the whole shot. If I know the target is here, we've already determined that's where the target is, what I want to do is get that softball position back here and kind of walk into that shot. But as we move forward with our body, we want to reach into it, kind of like a zoom lens on a camera, and move into the line this way so we extend ourselves. Now, if you'll notice, my chin is over the cue, but notice how far it is back from where the actual joint of the cue is. So if I'm shooting that ball right there, my chin is about here, right? That's about a foot and a half behind the joint. Now what that allows me to do, that if, it do, if I lean over it like this, is all of a sudden my rifle barrel becomes this long instead of this long. And you know if you're trying to hit a small target at a long distance, you want to have the longest rifle barrel possible to be accurate. Whether you shoot a gun or not, that's just common sense that that would be the case. But by doing that, I allow myself to kind of see the shot and move into the target like this. And if this arm is just hanging like it should be from our right proper position with our body, we then just have to stroke this shot for speed to get it to go where we want it to go. Now, Calvin, did your eyes stay on that spot the whole time? Very, very good question. The whole reason that you do this is to get yourself in a position where you can look at the last six inches of your cue, the cue ball, and that object ball all at the same time. If you, if you lean forward like this, you can't do it. You're looking down, you gotta look up, down, look up. See how my eyes have to go to see that? But if I'm here and I'm reaching out, all of a sudden I see everything out in front of me. It's all out in front of me, and it's all the same line. So if you really wanna see a target, you wanna see the whole line from the beginning to the end on that target. And that's how you wanna get yourself in position. So what does that mean with your body? What it means is that you need to get yourself in a position where you're far enough back reaching out enough where when you look down your cue you can see that whole thing. Now if I'm shooting a shot that far away, I'm going to hit pretty low. But if I'm shooting a shot this far away, I can see that whole line from standing back here. I don't need to get as low. I can get this low and still see everything. But you need to get as low as you need to get to see the whole shot. So the further that ball is away, the lower you have to get. You can only get as low. Here's something that's very important because some of you I see do this. You can only get as low as maybe two inches above the cue with your chin. Why do you think it wouldn't be better to be even lower than that? Anybody besides Charlie? Why wouldn't, why? You couldn't see down your cue. You see, if you're on your stick, you can't see down your stick. All you can see is beyond your stick. But by even staying two inches above there, I can still see down my cue, and it allows me to see the shot much better. Okay, yes ma'am. If you can't bend over quite that far, Very good. With, you know, need to say, is good. there a way to do your legs to compensate? Okay, what you're going to do, what you're going to do, most of us have, if we have lower back problems, and leaning forward and putting weight on one foot or the other causes us a little pain, you, most of us usually, if we can't do that, can sit. If you can sit, you can do this as well. The only thing you would change is you'd get a little closer to the ball than you would if you were stretched out. But what you would do is instead of, of uh, keeping your legs as straight, you would basically just sit straight down. And you can still get low enough to see both those balls. That'd probably be more comfortable for your back. So just kind of sit down into it a little bit more. Because you still have your balance between the two feet. So your feet would maybe not be quite as far apart, so you'd stay centered, but, and you just bend more from the knees. 
If you have bad knees and a lower back problem, you probably have to do what you can do. As I said before, there's some of you maybe that have physical limitations that we need to find the best way for you specifically. But those are the two best ways, depending on those two factors. Okay? All right? So when we're looking at a shot, what's the first thing we do if we're not sure of that shot? We're going to aim that straight in the pocket, right? We're going to back that up to where the center of that ball would be. We're going to rotate that around to the center of the cue ball. And that tells me in this case, I'm a little bit inside of the edge of that ball, not quite to the edge, more like one tip inside of the edge. The next thing, and this is very important because of the alignment, which is the main thing we're working on today, you don't want to just jump on top of that shot. You always want to step back from it and make sure that this arm is in line with the line of the shot through to the target point and then walk straight towards that. That way you don't have to do all the shuffling of your feet to find your spot, okay? So when you're making a ball, you're trying to do it in a certain order and not multitask. How many of you are good multitaskers? <laughs> Some of you are. You raise your hand if you are, because you're gonna have to forget that when you walk into your pool room, okay? And the reason, that's probably the only reason I can play this game is because I'm a terrible multitasker. If my lovely wife Christy was here with me right now, she would tell you, Yes, he's not. He's not a good multitasker. And what this means is you can think about one thing at a time, and you're really good if you're focused on that one thing, but if somebody else asks you to, to make a phone call or, or do something else, all of a sudden everything just goes and spins, right? And our concentration never gets better as we get older. It only, only does, loses it a little at a time, which is okay, hopefully slowly. But uh, the bottom line is you look at a shot, you're going to go through three steps, all right? Four steps if you're not sure where to hit your ball, okay? First step, if you're not sure of the target, you're gonna come around and look at the target. You're gonna back up to where the center is, you're gonna rotate around and see where you need to hit that ball. If you already know where that target is, you don't need to do that step. The second step is always to back up, for, well, the second step is to look at the shot and say, okay, that's where I'm gonna hit it, I want the cue ball to come over here and I'm gonna use high English to make it get there. If you know enough about position, that's what you would do. First, you decide where you want your cue ball to end up after the shot and how you're going to get it there. Okay? You think about that, that's the only time you think about that. You make a decision, don't ever change your mind, don't ever second guess yourself during the shot. Okay? The next thing you do is you always step back from the shot, get that arm in the right position so I can throw that, walk towards it, and sight your ball. Okay? Take as long as you need to make sure you're relaxed and sighting your ball. If you do the proper walk-in, it shouldn't take any time. You should be able to walk right to it, especially after a while and get used to the routine. Then once you're there and you've got it sighted, you want to hit it a certain distance. So you need to get a rhythm going on your stroke that makes that ball travel a certain distance. Okay? Because if it travels further than you want it to, you're not going to get a very good next shot. Right? So that's three steps, or four if you're a beginner. And every time you shoot a shot, you go through that same routine. But you only do those steps one at a time. How many of you have ever done this? If, if no one raises their hand on this one, I know that you're very nice people, but you're big liars. <laughs> How many of you have looked at a shot, got down over it, and said to yourself, you know, maybe I'll use a little right on this. Oh, yeah. oh well, you know that bank looking very, very good over there. And what ends up happening? That's what ends up happening. We end up missing a ball that we probably would have made otherwise because we're thinking about all these other things, right? It's happened to every one of us, me included, all right? So you have to think to yourself, clear your head. Be a, don't be a multitasker when you come to your pool table. Be specific, exact, and don't change your mind because you can't change your mind in the middle of a shot. If you get down over a shot and you look at it and you say to yourself, I don't feel right about this shot, should you shoot that shot? No. What should you do? Just start your routine over, right? And sometimes, you know, I tell you, I have done this, and sometimes there's, there's time limits on tournaments. They'll normally give you, in a professional tournament, what's called an extension. One time during a, a game, they'll let you take more than, than 30 seconds to shoot a shot, okay? I have, I've gotten shots where I looked at a ball as easy as this, and for some reason, it just did not feel right. Any time I shoot a ball without the, with that mindset, that ball's not going to go. I mean, I don't care how easy it is, it'll find a way to make a mistake. Your mind can actually fight against you, and I know you know this, and it can also work for you. And how many times have you looked at a ball that looks like a really hard shot, and you just know it's going in, and you shoot it, what does it do? It goes in every time. 
So our mind's a really powerful thing when it comes to the pool. But if you get over a ball, you don't feel right about the shot, step back, walk into it again. If it still doesn't feel right, go pick up a piece of chalk. Think about something else. Let's see, what am I going to do? All I'm doing right now is forgetting that that shot looked hard a second ago. <laughs> but I know eventually I'm going to have to go back to it, step into that shot, and shoot it. And you know what? It'll go every single time. Because you basically just cleared your head. You took the doubts out of your head and came back to your shot with a different perspective and the ball goes in, okay? So when you're pocketing balls, you've got to really remember that it's just a matter of going through the steps and getting your alignment right. If you have visual problems, a lot of you may not have very good eyes, okay? You have to remember there's certain things that you can get to make those better. Some of you can wear contacts. If you can't wear contacts, there's athletic glasses you can get that are designed specifically for pool that don't have the frames where they're in your sight line. And a lot of us that use our glasses don't use our glasses properly. And the reason is, we'll get down over the shot, and because we're at an angle with our body, we'll still look up over the frames to see the shot because it's more comfortable. But that's not going to work for you because you're not using your glasses to help your vision. That would be when you would do what this lady had asked me, where you'd probably sit more on the shot to keep your eyes level and your glasses level so you can use your glasses to see your targets. You see? Those of you that have good eyes, bless you. That's great. I'm, I'm lucky too. I'm 60 years old and I've never had to have glasses. But the bottom line is, if you don't have that fortune, then you want to utilize the glasses because you can get all kinds of things to make your eyes better these days. So it shouldn't be an excuse. But even if you cannot see and it's really difficult, I have actually taught a legally blind person. I'm talking legally blind. The man came in with his dog, legally blind. And he was a professional studio musician, a guitarist. He was also a, a golfer that shot supposedly below 100. And he was legally blind. He couldn't see in one eye at all, and he was like 400 in the other eyes. The only thing he could see was shapes and colors, right? He would get a lot of times over the nine ball thinking it was the cue ball, right? But because he learned the alignment things that I just taught you, just by seeing the shapes and the way the balls came together, he could walk into that shot. And I saw him more than one time run three and four balls in a row. And that's pretty amazing for somebody who can't see. You know, I mean, for most of us, we don't have that problem. We can see we can't do that. We can't. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So the bottom line is, if your technique is good, you can take your game as far as you can take your game. But if your technique is not good, then you're going to always find that plateau. And even though you may learn more about the logistics of how to play the game and the strategies of the game, you'll never be a better shot maker until you learn the logistics of what it takes to get your body in the proper position. Anybody else want to come down and try this? Don't be scared. It's okay. Just because it'll be on the internet forever, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, it's okay. If you don't, it's absolutely fine. I like to. What would you like to cook? I, I would. Were you here earlier, sir? You just walked in, didn't you? No. Oh, you did? Oh, it looks like I just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> no, you here. don't. You look like you're on vacation, but that's okay. But I want you to let, walk into this shot and just, just get yourself in position to shoot it. Let's take a look at your line. Okay, don't, don't shoot. But now, basically, his footwork is pretty good. This foot is in the right spot. His arm back here is hanging straight. There's one thing I would tell you. What is your name, sir? Phil. Phil, okay. Normally, the length of a bridge from the last place that it touches where the cue ball would make contact with this, you never want to be further than 12 inches back from that. That's if you have Charlie sized hands, big hands. 10 inches is about what most people should be. You have good sized hands, 10 to 12 for you. So you should never be that far from the cue ball. Your hand should be way up here. Other than that, do everything else the same. See, right now, now he's not so much play. You see, if he's back like this, he has to be much more accurate. Okay. Okay. Okay, the one thing that he was doing, and I, and I could see in the back, is he was holding his cue kind of like you would hold a violin. Holds it like this, okay? So what that would, so it would be good for bowing action, but not for pull. Because when you hold your hand like this, this is not how your arm naturally hangs. So he's going to have to steer it because of that. You want to hold that cue like you're picking up a suitcase at the airport, like this, where your, the arm is straight and your thumb and index finger touch and your arm hangs straight down from the hinge. Try that again. And I'll try to help you with your arm. Okay, let's hold this a little further back too so it's balanced with your body. 
Like you see, you're not behind the center. Okay, now you see, see how you want to be over here to make that ball? Yeah. That's what you have to be with your body to be able to do that. Now, relax your arm. Now just hang, see your arm hangs straight like that. Okay. okay? Okay, now, now just to relax your arm and just let it swing back and forth. Yeah. Put it back. Okay. Oh. <laughs> there you go. You see? Very good. But you see, what he was trying to do before is what I mentioned at the very beginning of the class. What he was trying to do before is he was trying to steer with his back hand. You can't steer. You can't do it because as you follow through, it's going to pull right or left. You're going to either hit the cue ball off center or you're going to change the angle of the shot as you follow through. So if you're in line on the shot and this arm isn't relaxed, it's going to hit the ball in a different place. So it's vitally important, especially if you're going to hit the balls hard with any accuracy. If I asked uh, anyone here, do you shoot shots with better accuracy when you shoot them hard or easy? easy. Anybody? Somebody said hard? Yeah. Really? Easy. Shoot, easy. If you hit a ball, if I shoot a ball all the way across the table on you, and I say, if that your life was depending on it, you would shoot that ball hard to make that it? That one right there? Yeah. Medium. Medium, okay. <laughs> okay, so I got important. Okay, well most people, most people, whenever they add power to their shots, a lot of time lose their accuracy. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well you've got to realize, number one, you've probably been getting your muscles involved. Okay? Our muscles aren't what we they were when we were twenty. I'm sorry, they just weren't. So you just have to realize you have to keep those muscles relaxed and let the weight of this cue and let the natural inertia that this cue creates give you power, okay? So when I shoot a ball like this, see how loose I'm holding this? I'm not gripping this in any way, shape, or form, it's loose. Actually, if I hit it with a good follow-through, a lot of times it'll slip through my fingers a so little because it's hard, so loose. Right? That was hard, yeah. Hard, hard on that. Yes, but the thing is, I didn't hit it with any strength. I just hit it with a weight distribution, okay? The point is, you can hit a ball hard and straight, as long as you're relaxed. You can't hit a ball hard and straight if you're tense. Okay, if you've ever hit anything else. they I understand they have a golf course somewhere close by. Okay, you, if you've ever tried to drive a ball with, with a tense swing, how many of you hit it on the fairway? Not many, right? It's not easy. You have to stay relaxed to be able to be accurate with your point of contact, but the biggest thing, to get your full follow through, which when you've got a cue stick that weighs 19, 20, 21 ounces, when you swing that weight, the only time you're getting the full power of that cue is when you just let the weight swing and don't disrupt it by stopping the stroke by muscling up, okay? Now I'll hit this ball about twice as hard as I hit the last one. And I'll just notice my backhand will not tense up as I hit it, okay? All right, now you're not gonna have to hit a ball harder than that very often. That's basically last, that went nine feet, nine feet, and back to there. So that traveled about 22 feet. And did I look tense behind there? It's loose. So you can get around the table or do anything you want on a pool table from just letting the weight change. And that's going to keep you accurate on your harder shots. The longer shots are a lot more difficult to make if you're tense, or almost impossible. But it also makes you more accurate on your soft shots. So if I wanted to just roll this in, as long as my arm is just swinging naturally, that's going to stay right on that target. I can swing it at that speed, and it's still going to stay straight. You see? Because there's no steering going on with the back hand. All right? Any questions on it? Yes, ma'am. Well, what about on the break? You mentioned, you know, your arm is okay. so much. Could you Absolutely about, like, on the break. Like an eight ball break. Okay. I'll do one of those if you'd like. Sure, sure. Where'd all the balls go? <laughs> oh, they're all, they must all be in that corner right there. That's a very good question, and I'll bet you most of you, when you break, lose your cue ball most of the time, right? Cue ball goes flying. You don't know where it's going to end up because we try to tense that shot. We muscle that shot, try to get a lot of extra power on it. But when that happens, you don't follow through. And you always want to remember that the longer follow through will create more power than any of your muscles. So in this case, you want to get these balls around the table. Obviously, you want to pocket a ball. There's a, there's a lot of different ways you can break eight ball, but I'm going to break close to the middle because I think this is where most people break from, somewhere around the middle of the table. I'm going to break about six inches to the right of center. With the the other, with the glove. With the glove. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Rules. Well, the yeah. only problem with the only problem with this, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not I'm trying to discard your, your rules. I know that. <laughs> is sometimes this ball elevates a bit, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I'm going to try to hit the ball a little bit lower than I probably would normally hit it, because this is already starting off elevated. Okay. So what I'm going to do, but it, but look at your tables. They, these were put in here what two years ago? Three and a half, five. Yeah. Three. They look brand new. So you know what? What you guys are doing are keeping your equipment up. So I can't argue with that. I know that occasionally you have to get re-level the things, and that's just part of, of, of maintenance. But what I'm going to do with this is I want to hit that ball as straight as possible, right? Because the straighter I hit that ball, the more my cue ball hits that with a mass and stays there. Now, if I hit that ball with high English, a lot of you think by hitting that with high English, it's going to put more power on it. What that does is as soon as it hits that ball, it's going to jump off of that ball with high. And what that does is the momentum then stops. If I hit this in the center, the cue ball hits there with a flush motion. It stays there until those balls push it off those balls. So it will stay longer and you'll get more separation of the shot. But as far as your question is concerned, what I want you to do is I want you to watch where the tip of my cue stick ends up when I finish. It's going to end up about the side pocket. Okay? I'm going to keep this loose in my hands. Okay? I'm really hoping this comes off level. And I'm going to relax it and follow through. Okay. Now, now, if you notice the balls are traveling for quite a while, right? Yeah. I can't figure out where all that power came from. It's because my it stick ended up out here. Did you notice where it finished? It followed yeah. through it's way it's out there. Yeah. But now I made a ball, and here's the thing that's great about this eight ball rig. I made a ball down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven balls on this side of the table, seven balls on that side of the table. Eight, actually. So they are evenly distributed around the table. The cue ball is somewhat in the center. I didn't hit the cue ball as flush as I meant to or to. But I tried to make sure that I didn't have launch it and have it break your window over there. So Why did it jump? Why did the cue ball jump a little bit? Well, because I'm coming off of a mat here. Oh. So it's already elevated. When it hits that, it wants to jump up. Yeah. So, But that's okay. That's protecting your cloth. You just have to hit the cue ball a little bit lower than you would normally. If you're aiming at the center of this ball, if it were flush on the table, you'd probably go about a quarter tip lower than that. It kind of makes up for it, keeps it from flying off the table. You don't want to do that either. So, But if you break a rack of eight ball like this, the nice thing about this is there's no two balls touching. They're separated around the table. And for those of you that play a little bit, this is a runnable rack, isn't it? I mean, very runnable here. I mean, you've got a couple of different difficult shots here. Uh, the, the solids are a little tougher than the stripes because of where the three ball is, but otherwise this is a pretty pretty good table. You got one problem over there with the 14, perhaps a little, little tougher position. But but that does that help you about the break? Oh, yeah. See, I didn't tense up. I just followed through more, and that's what you want. That's how you're going to get that power. Now you're probably not going to get as much as I just got. Yep. Well, let's be honest, because I've done this for a while. But the longer you follow through, and the more you relax and get that weight of the cube going through and continuing forward, the more power you're going to create, okay? Now we normally follow through six or eight inches on a shot. How right. Do you, how do you follow through three feet? Okay, well yeah. bottom line is you keep this loose in your fingers and as you follow through it just basically comes right on out of your hand as you follow through. But you hit the ball long before that, right, as you go through. Uh, a lot of people use what's called a slip stroke and a lot of times slip strokes are used to uh, pocket shots to put a lot of power on them without having to create a real big motion with your arm. Because if I had to shoot, let's say, that 12 ball and draw the cue ball, which is back the ball up, and come all the way back for this 15, that you'd look at that shot and you'd say, i got to smack that one, wouldn't you, more than likely? Mm -hmm. Most of you would look at it and say, I'm not going to get there. But if you look <laughs> at it, you'd say to yourself, I'd have to smack it. If I smack it, I'm never going to get there because I'm going to stop that motion. But I'm going to put this next to my cue ball for right now. That way you can watch where the cue stick finishes and see how far I follow through on this. I'm not going to hit it hard. I'm just going to hit it with a long follow through. I'm going to let the cue stick slip a little bit. Okay. See how far I went through that? No problem. Okay. But it has to go through. Basically, you start that momentum back. You have to come all the way back. But when you go forward, you just let it go until the cue finishes, until it finishes its motion. Because you're continuing to create power until it gets to the end of that motion. Is that so, like golf the follow through? 
Absolutely, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You've got a ball sitting in a standing in a standing position. You're going to take a club. You're going to swing it back, and you're going to hit that ball. Now, if you hit a drive like this, you wouldn't hit it very far, would you? And you probably break your shoulder in the process. But the fact that you let it go like this and you go through that ball and finish that stroke, hopefully not with your head up like this because it'll go slicing out. You'd have your head down, but you still finish that follow through and then you look up to see what you, what you did. Same thing's true in wave for a pool. You don't want to get up until the shot's finished. That's a very good point. Yeah. If you look at that shot, if I'm going to shoot that eight ball, I don't want to shoot that eight ball. I don't want to shoot that eight ball like this. <laughs> Any of you do that? Oh, yeah. yes. Right? Bro. <laughs> okay. That shot is not finished. That shot is not finished until that ball goes in. Not gets hit. Goes in. So when you shoot a shot like that, no matter what you're going to put on it, now it's done. It's not done till then. You want to be the most accurate. And there's, there's a few things you're trying to do with a shot. We already talked about that. There's three or four steps. If I want to make that ball and say try to get straight in on the, on the uh, five ball for my next shot, once I get down on it, if I get my motion going at a pace, if I stay down and finish that motion, I got a much better feel of how far that ball is going to travel. See? To get there. If I don't finish that, it's normally going to come up short. If I jump up as I do it, a lot of times it goes long because you don't feel that distance. Okay. So when you're playing a shot, you're making balls and you're trying to play position, what you want to do is you want to stay till it's finished because once you start this nice momentum going here, if you're relaxed with your stick, you get a, a speed going. Just as if you were throwing a horseshoe. If there's a stake out there and you're throwing a horseshoe, you go like this, right? You get your motion going. When you're ready to throw, you just follow through. But you'd stay there, right? If you ever fly fished, anybody ever fly fish? Oh, you should try it. It's great. <laughs> you take your fly and you start swinging it, don't you? And then when you're ready to finally throw it, you just follow through, right? And you place it where you want to go. Well, by doing this with a shot, you take your shot, you get your stroke going, and when you're ready to finish, you follow through and you place where that ball is going to go so you get back for the position on that ball. You see? It has a momentum, it has a motion to it, and it all comes from the starting point, knowing where your target is, getting yourself in a position where you're going to throw this, walk into your shot, sight your ball, get a nice motion going on your shot, stay down, finish your shot, feel your distance. So the bottom line is with this, it's a matter of understanding the angles, yes. It's a matter of hitting the ball at the right speed, yes. But, the, but you got to make the ball first, don't you? you got to make the ball first. That's the hardest part. So if we start by stepping back and walking into those shots, then we're going to play a lot better position. Okay. All right, Charlie. We're ready. You got me. It's probably going to take ten minutes for one of us to run out. All right. This is the finest quality broomstick we could find. The finest. It doesn't have a joint in it, Charlie. I told you I wanted one with a joint in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we are going to play eight ball. Charlie's not going to make me play straight forward with that. So we we did actually get you a broomstick that doesn't have the broomstick attached to it. Oh, 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 that's very nice. Look at that. Oh, there nice. we go. Yay. All right. Calvin's broomstick. Okay, very good. Can I get you to hold that? All right. So we're going to play a game of eight ball. Look how straight that is. Okay, here's the rule. If I beat Charlie with this, everybody pays double. Is that fair? <laughs> Okay, uh, all right. You can have a break. You can probably do a lot better job than I can. I do have a custom broom. How funny is that? It even has a little wrap on it. Okay. You ever played with that before? I have not. This is. Uh, I I have a witness here that I have not seen this broom until right now. <laughs> And we didn't, we didn't have an actual two-piece broom, but I put a little thing in the middle to make it look like To make like it look like a joint, okay. <laughs> Looks like he's got a tip on it. Yeah, well, yeah, he just he darkened the <laughs> thing. So. So just plain wood Calvin, wood. can you show the camera? Oh, yeah. My new cue. There you go. my <laughs> cue? Thank <laughs> you. 
person when I used to actually make some money doing this <coughs> against other people's misfortunes. You know how that is. Every once in a while, you have to gamble a little at something, and this was what I did. I used to play people's straight pool, which is the game we played earlier, using using a broom. Well, it's pretty tough to put any English on it. You can't do much. About the best you can do is you can put a stop stroke on it, so I'm going to show you that. You can't stop the ball with a broom, you just have, but you have to snap it then because you have to make these things happen. But uh, that was a fun game when I used to play when I was a kid, so that's why we did it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. 